Hey there guys, how's it going? Today we're just going to jump into some Atlas mythology from Greek mythology. So he was the son of the Titans Iapetus and Clymene, and brother to Epimetheus, Menetius, and Prometheus. He fathers the nymphs Calypso and Maia, who in some myths father Hermes. With his brother Menetius, he aids his father in the Titans' conflict against the gods. Now, he was also connected to astrology in some way, may even have been like a reigning deity of astrology as well. But the juicy part of his character, of course, comes from the famous myth that he's in. The Titan monarchy, the war between the Titans, led by Cronus and Zeus, leading the gods, lasted ten years. And Zeus knew that he couldn't defeat the Titans with the gods alone, sought the aid of the Cyclopses and the hundred-handed Hecatonchres. Now, the Hecatonchres were monsters to their father, thanks to their many limbs and heads, giving them a, let's say, unflattering appearance. So, you know... Daddy Uranus sort of abandons them, but Gaia gives them unconditional love and doesn't abandon them, doesn't want to, and technically ends up, in a sense, not abandoning them, because Uranus sort of banishes them to Tartarus, which is, of course, located inside of Gaia, which makes the Hecatonchres angry and resentful, because they've just been banished for no reason. They're just brought up in a way where they, all they know is like this dark, particularly not nice place. When, of course, Uranus is overthrown, they were freed for a bit, but they were, of course, these angry, resentful beings, and Cronus just couldn't tame them. So he opts to just banish them away again in Tartarus, where they sort of, you know, are not particularly pleased by that. So when Zeus came by and offered their freedom in return for their services, they accepted. All they had to do was defeat the dragon that guarded them, locate an aid in freeing the Cyclopses within Tartarus, and take the largest boulder off their prison and hurl it towards Mount Olympus. It was also agreed that after the Titans sort of bit the bullet and were defeated, that they would be imprisoned in Tartarus and the Hecatonchres would be able to stand guard over them. And what this ultimately translated into was Thunderbolt support from the Cyclopses, volleys of mountains hailing down upon the Titans like artillery from the Hecatonchres, and of course that combined with the forces Zeus already had with his Olympians and gods and, you know, powerful beings. So with this combined effort, Zeus's side wins, leaving the Titans to be imprisoned in Tartarus, save for Themis, Prometheus, and Atlas. And Atlas being forced to hold up the sky for leading the Titans at some point during the conflict. Apparently in some stories it's Hera that even allows this to happen in the first place because she convinces some Titans that Zeus was weakened or in a position where it'd be good to attack Olympus. So Atlas leads the charge and you know, attempts to take advantage of everything that was going on but he ultimately fails and is you know, forced to hold up the sky. A common myth is that he's actually holding up the earth, the entire earth itself, but no, it's it's the sky. And in some versions of the myth as well, he's actually holding up the pillars that lift the heavens. So, heavy stuff all the same. As you can imagine, with that task, he's not exactly going anywhere, he can't really move, and it's an incredible strain, right? So, he does get a break, thanks to Hercules, actually. So, during his 12 trials, Hercules has to retrieve the golden apples from the gardens of Hesperides. These are sacred to Hera and guarded by the Ladon, a, a hundred-headed dragon, which sounds amazing, by the way. Could you imagine that as a boss fight? But yeah. And in some tales, Atlas is the father of the Hesperides, and Prometheus advises him to ask the Titan to grab some apples for him, whilst Hercules... Oh, sorry, Heracles himself, with the help of Athena, bears the weight of the sky. Now, Atlas wasn't going to say no to his first break in wealth ever, and agreed to help. And as he was returning with the apples, he thought that he didn't fancy lifting the weight of the sky again, so he was a bit reluctant to, uh, you know, swap places with Herc and in some versions of the story Hera, and Heracles ultimately has to trick him into temporarily swapping places with him, saying to the Titan that he was going to go grab some cushions to make it easier for him to lift, but Heracles essentially lied and never came back, so... Sorry, Atlas, I guess. He does get to meet another hero, but later on, apparently. So this part actually explains the origins of the Atlas Mountains in Africa. So Perseus was traveling through that region of the world for some reason or another, and he essentially asks Atlas for safe passage or for some rest or for help in some way. In some versions of the myth, he claims to be a descendant of Zeus and the Olympians, to which... 
Atlas, you know, says that he's lying and that he's full of whatever and refuses to grant him passage, to which Perseus takes offense and pulls out the head of Medusa, turning him into stone. Now, that varies, but he does get turned to stone by Medusa is the point, and becomes the mountains themselves. The tricky thing with this myth, apparently, is that because it's a later myth used to explain the formation of mountains, apparently it clashes with the Hercules myth, because Perseus and Hercules existed at points to where this wouldn't make sense. So that was everything I have on the Titan Atlas. Of course, if you want to see more videos and all of that good stuff, be sure to leave a like, and of course, if you're new here, subscribe to the channel as well. For now, you should expect more videos, more content, so I should be doing this for, for a bit, like a few months, so you know, have no fears there. And welcome back to the channel, everyone. Of course, if you all have any suggestions for gods or things you want me to cover, you know where to leave those. And without any further ado, enjoy the rest of your day.